must be got to be born again got to be born again amen amen let's give our choir around yeah amen amen let's give our musicians round of applause amen amen we praise and we thank god we thank god new thing it's hot up in here it's hot up in here i need you all to stand <laughs> I know you said it's not the time, but everybody stand. Stand right now. Stand. It's preaching time. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to flip things a little bit. Stand oh, up. Stand Hallelujah. up right now. There is, a, there is a word for you. There's Hallelujah. a word. There's a word. There's Thank a word. You, Jesus. I need you to meet me in the Old Testament book right. of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 6. 2 Kings 20, 1 through 6. 2 Kings, 20th chapter. Verses 1 through 6. Amen, 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 amen. You ready for a word today? Hallelujah. Amen. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. Second Kings 21 says, And in those days Hezekiah was sickened to death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, said and came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, uh, for Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, God of David, my, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Yeah. Behold, I will heal the. I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Verse six says, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, <laughs> and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of Assyria, of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sakes and for my servant David's sake. You may be seated. Father, we ask that you will add a blessing to the hearing, the reading, the doing of thy precious and holy word. I pray that I, Ed Robinson, in Jesus' name, will not be seen. Father God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will have his way. You know my heart's preparation. We thank you even, Father, for the spiritual audible of even the change. Father, I pray that you use me in a mighty way. It is in Jesus' name and God's people said amen. Amen. I need you to know that I was going in a whole different direction. I've been working on things all uh, last couple of weeks or so. And then the Lord uh, just said, Ed, I need you to go in this direction. I want to be obedient. So our, our subject for today is finding the good in a bad report. Finding the good in a bad report. You can also find this same uh, parallel account in Isaiah, the 38th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Let me tell you some good news, bad news as it relates to pastors. Uh, the elder board of a particular church accepted the pastor's job description just as he had written them out. Uh, they were so inspired that they formed a search committee to try to find another person who was capable of filling that position. That was the bad news. The good news is that your women's softball team finally won their, their first game. The bad news is that they beat the men's softball team. The good news is that your church attendance rose dramatically over the last three weeks, but the bad news is that you as a pastor was on vacation. So the question for you is that when was the last time that you received some bad news? Do you feel that your bad news is so overwhelming as that's it, this is as good as it get? Have you ever felt stuck from the bad news that you had received? I gotta tell you, on yesterday we were doing our Compton Initiative and one of our community partners by the name of Brandon came up to me afterwards. He said, Pastor Ed, he said, man, you've been going through some difficult times over the last couple of months or so. And what he was saying to me is that I heard some bad reports that's going on with you. And I had, I had to tell Brother Brandon as Tommy Tobert and I would always say, yes, I've seen the times and the times have seen me. It's been some difficult days, but I wanted Brandon to know that I was putting my faith and my hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that you may have a bad report. You may have gone to the doctor this week. You may have gone to your bank account. You may have heard some bad news about a family member. You may have had a loved one or someone pass away. But I want you to know that God can still bring some good news even out of a bad report. The central character in this Text is a guy by the name of Hezekiah. He was the king of Judah. Hezekiah was 25 years old when he came to the throne of Judah. I want you to know also that Hezekiah was a good, he was on a short list of good godly kings from Israel. 
Most of them were Bay Bay Kings. Most of them were sipping the yak. Most of them were cray cray. But he was on the short side of the ledger where he did good and right in the sight of God. And God wanted to honor that. So one day he's at home. He ain't bothering nobody. Sister Francis, he's just chilling. He posted, he's kicked it or whatever. And he gets a knock on the door. And I don't know about you. Sometimes you get a knock on the door. And now most of you have those ring alarm situations where you can see somebody at a distance before they even touch. And you say, don't touch that. <laughs> but oh, he got a knock on the door. And it was a, a guy by the name of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet, Brother Donnie. And he said, the Lord sent me your way to tell you something, brother. And I want to tell you three things that I want you to consider from this message. One is the power of prayer. The power of prayer. Secondly is the privilege of answered prayer. And thirdly is the priority of the Lord. So one, the, pro, the, the power of prayer. Two, the, 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 the uh, privilege of answered prayer. And then three, the priority of the Lord. So the first one that I want to look at is the privilege of answer prayer. So Isaiah gets this bad news and he tells them to set your house in order. In other words, what he was telling them, he said, I need you to go and pull out all of your important paperwork. I need you to get your will. I need you to get your power of attorney. I need you to find out who's going to be the heir that's going to take over you when, you when you go. You need to get your house in order. I want to let somebody know that God is telling somebody today, you need to get your house in order. Need to get your finances in order. Need to get your health in order. Need to get your, your attitude in order. Need to get your financial situations and insurance and everything in order. So he told him, he says, set the house in order for thou shalt die and not live. I don't know about you all. I've heard some bad news over the last year or so, Brittany, but that, I, I haven't got any bad news like that. That's, that's worse. That, that's, that's some bad news. That when you are communicated with and, and, and the doctor look at it and say, you know, Brother Ed, it's been good that you've been here, but you're going to die, brother. And so, so, so he got some bad news that he was going to die. You may have gotten some bad news that it doesn't look good in your relationship. Your marriage may have died. Your relationships with your children may have died. Your job satisfaction and rewarding may have died. Your, your ability to serve the Lord may have died. Your educational or academic dreams may have died. And, and, and you may feel like it's all over, but you got to see the power of prayer. So here's what happened in the midst of the bad news, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the mess, in the midst of the issue, in the midst of the heartaches, in the midst of the setback, in the midst of the turnaround, in the midst of the disappointments, in the midst of it didn't look good at all, in the midst of being downtrodden, in the midst of his depression, in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of disgrace, he turned his face unto the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. He said, I don't know about you, you may have gotten some bad news, but I know somebody who is able to fix it for me. Hezekiah said, I've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And he said, I did some things that even my daddy wasn't willing to do. His daddy was worshiping false gods and idol gods and demigods and things of that nature. And when he came to the throne, the first thing he did, Sheila, he cleaned all of that stuff up. He said, all of this stuff got to go. So in other words, he had a relationship, not a religion, but he had a relationship with the Lord. And he fellowship with God. He knew how to communicate with God. He knew how to keep it 100 with God. He just poured out his heart. He didn't turn to the social media platform of that day. He didn't get on the phone and start gossiping. Child, you can't believe what I just got, was just told. After all that I've done for the Lord, the Lord is about to abandon me right now. I'm a Jew God. He said, no, 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 no. It says that he turned unto the Lord. And he had a little talk with the Lord. I want to tell somebody in the midst of your bad news, just turn unto the Lord. Tell God all about it. You know why I want you to tell him about it? Because he already knows about it. He just want to see if you're going to trust him with your situation. He turned his face to the wall. Now, he just didn't turn his face to the wall. You know, sometimes in communication, you know, when you think about communication, 7% of it is, is pretty much the words. But the rest of it is our body language. There is, a, 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 I, there is an American president, when I see him do his press conferences, he's always sitting like this. In other words, that's a closed thing. I don't want to communicate. I don't want to connect with you. 
But I want to tell somebody that, you know, open yourself up unto the Lord. Allow the Lord to have his way in the situation. He turned unto the Lord and he prayed. In other words, he cried out. He communicated. He listed what his needs was. He told God all about it. Lord, I'm in the midst of a, of a bad situation. I just got a, the, the, the most uh, 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 humiliating report that one could ever get, that I'm about to die, that they're about to make my funeral arrangements, Lord. And he, so he said, I'm going to turn it over unto the Lord. You got you to realize that turn is a verb. So he moved a little bit, right? God is saying that I want you to move. And when you move, move a little bit closer to me. And I don't know if he, he was in his bed and he just kind of turned to the wall and he prayed. I want to tell somebody that sometimes we go through circumstances and we hold on to those bad reports and those negative things that get in our spirit and they, and they impact us and they, they, they weigh us down because we don't pray about it. Let me tell you a little insight, all right? Pray about everything, worry about nothing, all right? Let me, let me just say that. Pray about everything. Lord, everything is going good. I'm still going to pray. Not only am I going to pray, Lord, but I'm going to praise you also. Lord, I'm going to thank you for what you've done. He turned into the wall and he prayed about it. He talked to the Lord. He told him all about everything. He didn't hold anything back here. He said, Lord, I need you to know all about everything that I'm going through. Look at verse number three. It says, and I beseech, I beg of thee. He says, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. He said, Lord, I, I tried to do the right thing. He says, I tried to be right on the idolatry issue. I tried to be right on the religious issue. I tried to be right, uh, right on, on, on when people were being treated wrong and injustice. He said, I tried to do the right thing, Lord. He says, I have not always had it right, but I, I have walked before the in truth with a perfect, not a, not a, not a uh, without sin or fault, but with a loyal heart. In other words, I'm dedicated unto you. He says, Lord, I'm, I'm focused on you. We have a relationship. Lord, you know me. I wonder if God was to pull up his favorites, would you be in his favorite? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He says that I, I know all about you. And he says, I have done that which is good uh, in thy sight. He says, Lord, I've done what was good in thy sight. Now, anybody know anything about me? I love going to the movies. I go to the movies every day if I can. If my, I, two things I would do, run every day, and then I would go to the movies every day. The other day, I was sitting in there, and I was watching the movie Uncle Ben in Richmond, Virginia for the second time. Might even see the third time. It was a good movie, right? And I'm sitting there, and I'm watching the deal. And Uncle Ben, the basketball movie, right? And there was a line in there. Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew. I'm sorry. Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew. Come on, darling. Uncle Drew, Uncle Drew. Darlene, cause she helps me at Bible study. I always get the names, man. But Uncle Drew, and I'm watching the movie, and the game is on the line. And the coach named Dax, uh, I forgot his real name. What's his name, Jennifer, the young guy's name? L. Ray or whatever, I can't remember his name. Lil Ray or something. Anyway, so Dax is the coach, and now Shaq is hurt, and now uh, Dax gets the ball, and he has to go and shoot the ball. And he just freezes, and he calls a timeout. Kyrie, who was Uncle Drew, came over to him, and he said something to him that was just most profound to me. He says, young man, he says, I don't need, we don't need you to be perfect all the time. You don't need to be great all the time. I just need you to be great this time. And I want to say to somebody today that God is saying he don't need you to be great all the time. He don't need you to have it all together all the time. But this time, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the problem, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the situation, in the midst of the bad report he said I just need you to believe me that I can fix this for you that I can work it out for you hallelujah the end of verse number three it says in Hezekiah wept sore brothers I want to let you know I want to give you a pass it's okay to cry not only did it says that he wept but he wept sore in other words, he was crying, uh, uh, Brother Dwayne, those crocodile tears. He was, oh, oh, Lord Jesus, oh, man, this is bad. Lord, I believe you, but I don't want to die. And sometimes you get to the point where you're paying so much, you just got to cry, Brother Donnie. You cry unto the Lord. You tell him all about it. And he said, Lord, I know that you're able. So I want somebody to know that there is power. There is effectiveness. There is efficacy in the spirit of prayer. 
And when we pray and we tell all of God all about it, he can fix everything for us. Jesus says that men are always pray and not faint. Paul says that, 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 that we ought to always pray without ceasing. Our attitude ought to be that of prayer in everything that we're doing. Now, this message is for me too, Deborah. I want you to know because I've gotten some bad report, but I'm going to keep on praying till light breaks through because I know the Lord will answer. He will answer me. He will fix it in his own time. So the power of prayer. Secondly, in verses 4 and 5, we're going to see the privilege of answered prayer. It says, and it came to pass. I want you to know that you might be going through some stuff right now. You might be in the midst of a bad situation, a bad relationship, ill health. You may have financial situations that's not working out. Your school may be may not be what it what you want it to be. Uh, your job may may be at a point where it's not looking good for you at all. But I want you to know that it will come to pass. You see, circumstances tell us where we are right now. But faith in God, love he takes us to the other side, that even though I can't see it, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to trust in the Lord who's able to work things out on my behalf. The scripture says, and it came to pass. Hallelujah. Verse 4, before Isaiah or before Isaiah was going out of the middle court. They had the middle court, they had the outer court, the inner court, before he had gotten to the middle court. In other words, I want you to get this. In the midst of our situation, while we're trying to figure it out, I want you to know God is already working it out. So just turn it over to him. It says, and before he got to the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him saying, he said, I want you to do an about face. Verse number five, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain, the king of, uh, 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 of my people, thus says the Lord. You know, sometimes people do those thus says the Lord's, right? Yeah, the Lord told me to tell you, Deacon Reg, you give me $100. <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you, church, to buy me a brand new car. You know, we get these, thus says the Lord. But this is a, a real, <laughs> thus says the Lord right here. He says, this is what God, this is the prophet who said, this is what God told me to tell you. He hadn't even gotten in his chariot well. He hadn't even gotten to his Uber, his Lyft. He hadn't even gotten around the corner very well. He says, he said, here's the God of thy father. He says, I tell him that I have heard thy prayer. I want you to know that God is in the answering business. God is in the listening business. God wants to hear from you. He says, I've heard your prayers. And let me just say this. Some of us have been praying for a long time. And it seemed like there's no movement. It seemed like everything is still the same. But I want you to know that God in this perfect time, he will move on your behalf. He will turn the situation. He can heal because he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. He can fix it for you. Hallelujah. He says, tell him that I have heard his prayer. And not only that, but he says, I have seen thy tears. Some of us been crying. Some of us been weeping over some circumstances. The Bible tells us that the Lord collects your, your tears in the Bible, in a bottle. In other words, God is concerned about your tears. That you can cry as much as you want. You can tell him all about it. Yes. I love to tie, cry because I realize that crying is therapeutic for me. I don't know about all of you, but it's therapeutic. It's healing for me. It is a release for me. And I'm not ashamed to cry. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of what Christ has done for me. I'm not ashamed that he's turned my life around. I'm not ashamed that he picked me up. I'm not ashamed that he moved me out of darkness. I'm not ashamed that he moved me into the marvelous light. So if I got to cry, I'm going to cry. If I got to cry at the doctor's office, I'm going to cry. If I got to die to cry in the front of my financial advisor, I'm going to cry. If I got to cry in the store, I'm going to cry. If I got to cry at the bank, I'm going to cry. If I got to cry at Costco, I'm going to cry. And sometimes when I used to run, I'd be walking and having my hands up and tears come out of my eyes. And young ladies and others would say, what, what are you doing? Are you okay, sir? I'm not crazy. I'm just rejoicing. I thank God. That this nearly 60-year-old guy can still move my body. <laughs> That's what I'm crying about. I'm happy up in here. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Because I kept the faith. Yes, yes, yes. He says, I have seen thy tears. And behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Oh, it's something about that third day, Brother Ward. Three days. 
He said on that third day, you know, three is complete, whole. He said on that third day, something's going to happen in your life, Hezekiah. I know that they're writing out the wheel and they, they try to figure out how they're going to divide your property. But I want you to know on that third day, something is going to happen in your life. Hallelujah. He, what it say? He says, I will heal thee. He says, I will fix thee. I will strengthen thee. I will bless thee. I will lift thee up. I will walk with thee. I will come with thee. I will encourage you. I will work things out for thee on the third day. But oh, you got to get this though, Hezekiah. He says, when you get healed, you can't sit in the castle. You got to go to church. You got to go to the house of the Lord. You got to give him some praise. Because I'm about to answer your prayer. Look what he said. He says, on the third day, and thou shalt go unto the house of the Lord. Some of us have gotten our healing. Some of us have gotten our blessing, and we've gone other places, but unto the house of the Lord. God is telling somebody that when I bless you, when I fix you, enter into the house of the Lord with thanksgiving on your hearts and praise on your lips. Tell them all about it. Lord, I thank you that you fixed me. Lord, I thank you that I'm not 100% healed, but you're, you're, you're hearing my prayers. You're strengthening me. Lord, I thank you. In other words, what I'm trying to say, don't wait until the battle's over. Shout now. Lord, I thank you. Yes. The doctors have an MD behind their name. They've been medical doctors, and, but Lord, they only know a, whole, a little bit. But we got to tell them all of our list of degrees that we have. We have our BA. We've been born again. We got to tell them I got a BS. We've been, been, been suffering. And you got to tell them about your EMA, sister, sister, sister Bailey. I got much agony. I got an EMS. I've been much suffering. Yes, you got to tell them all about it. He said, but I got a PhD, doctor. You need to know this. I'm a pretty happy disciple. And I'm standing on the word of God. Yes, 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 yes. He said, you got to go into the house of the Lord. Give God some of your time. Imagine if God held back on us like we hold back on him. <laughs> I can't pray today, Lord, <laughs> but I need you to fix it. <laughs> Lord, I can't read your word today, but I need you to come through in the midst of the situation, Lord. Lord, I know you put this person right here next to me at the airport to witness to him, but Lord, I got other things I need to do. What if God did that to us? All right, I thank God. I, got, I thank God. We got to land a plane. We got to land a plane. So we see the power of prayer. We see the privilege of answer prayer. Now we see the priority of the Lord in verse number six. It says, not only did he says he's going to heal him on the third day, but you got to get this. You got to get this. He says, and I will add. You know, there's addition and there's subtraction. Subtraction is taken away. But Brother Michael adding is doing something, is giving you something, is pouring something, is making it bigger. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. I don't know about you, but Sister Lauderdale, if the Lord told me that, I'm about to die. The doctor told me I'm about to die tomorrow. And then he told me I'm going to add 15 years. I'm going to shout. I'm going to run. I'm going to jump. I'm going to praise. I'm going to say, oh, Lord, thank you. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. You didn't have to do any of this, but you did it. He says, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Then he says, and I will deliver thee in the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. See, these were their, these were their arch enemies. He says, I'm going to deliver them out of their hands. He says, for my own sake, it's something about the name of the Lord. He says, my name is going to be respected. My name is going to be honored. My name is going to be valued. And he says, not only that, but for my servant David's sake. Yeah. Hallelujah. The priority of the Lord. I want somebody to know that God can oversee and supersede whatever our circumstances may be. Got to tell you, you might be in the midst of the storm. And when we were coming back from Richmond, Virginia, we had a smooth uh, uh, flight up and we had kind of a rough, rough one coming back. As we were coming back to LAX and we uh, looked out the window, and we were right in the midst of that. We were hitting turbulence and we were in the midst of the clouds and it was shaking a little bit. And it was it was going back and forth. Sister Devin and I was doing the hobble and everything on the plane. And I'm like, man, you know, whoa. And we was going up and down and boom, 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 boom for a little while. Right. And boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, the pilot said, put on your seatbelts. 
And he says, we're going to go up a little bit higher. And when he went up a little bit higher, it was amazing. Right above the, uh, 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 the clouds was a blue sky and the sun, the, uh, the sun was shining bright. I want to let you know that you might be in the midst of the storm. You might be in the midst of the pain. You might be in the midst of a bad report. You may be in the midst of things not looking good for you. But I want you to know that God is saying that I can take you to a higher level. All I want you to do is trust in thee with all my heart, lean your own heart, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge you, and I shall direct your path. You see, it's something about the name of Jesus the Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is deliverance in the name name of Jesus Christ. There is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a way being made for you out of no way in the name of Jesus Christ. There is joy in the name of Jesus Christ. There is peace in the name of Jesus Christ. And I got to tell you about that Jehovah Shalom, which means the God of peace. It doesn't mean the absence of trouble, but it means the peace of God in the midst of trouble. Something about that name that gets me excited. When I hear the name of Jesus, it makes me want to shout. When I hear the name of Jesus, it makes me want to just speak out. When I hear the name of Jesus, it gives me joy. It lets me know that everything is going to be all right. But I thank God that you can find good even in a bad report. And the same God who worked on behalf of, of Hezekiah is the same God that is working on your behalf. So whatever your circumstance may be, Whatever your situation may be, turn to God, turn it over to him, and watch and see what he can do in the name of Jesus Christ. We got to do what David said in Psalms 27, 13, and 14. I had almost fainted, I had almost fainted, unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But then David said, wait on the Lord. In other words, hope in the Lord. Expect in the Lord. Yeah. Believe that God is going to do something. Know that God is mindful yeah. of you. He says, wait on the Lord. And then he says, when you do it, he says, be of good courage. Yeah. Lord, it looks bad, but I'm going to keep coming to church. Lord, it looks bad, but I'm going to keep on coming to Bible study. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on teaching Sunday school. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on singing in the choir. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on playing my musical instrument for thee. Oh, Lord, it doesn't look good, but I'm going to keep on ushering for you. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on showing up and preaching for you. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on serving in the nutrition ministry. Lord, it don't look good at all, but I'm going to keep on deacon for you. Lord, it don't look good, but I'm going to keep on doing whatever it is you would have that you get the glory that you get to honor that you get the victory that is do your name hallelujah i just got to tell somebody that god has been good to me got a few bad reports but i'm standing on the promises of god i'm believing that god is going to fix it for me will you join me as we look into the lord father we come to thee in the strong name of jesus we give you the praise we give you